Welcome to the Aquarium Guys Podcast with your hosts, Jim Colby and Rob Zolson. All right, guys, welcome to the Aquarium Guys Podcast. I'm your favorite host, Robbie Olson, and the subpar host is... Jim Colby here. How you doing, buddy? I am wonderful. What a great weekend we had. We rocked it hard, didn't we? We did. We went and saw Great White because not only were you kind of sewer of fish, but also burned out 80s pants. No, I'm just kidding. It was a good, wow. it was a good wow. time. Wow. Wow. I went backstage with you. You hooked me up. We had a great time this week. Yeah, we did. As, as you've heard about what we talked about on the podcast, uh, one of my other hobbies is we love the 80s rock and roll. So on Saturday, uh, we took Rob's uh, rock and roll 80s. Uh, virginity away we took him saw great white and vixen at our local casino we did meet and greets we hung out we got autographs it was a pretty good time i didn't even get offered heroin so i feel like i've got not quite the full experience but close yeah and and how was the opening band vixen rob's goal this is an all-girl band you know i've never been more attracted to 50 plus year old women more than betty white Betty White's oh. still above him, but that was pretty no, hot. Yeah, if Betty White was banging on the drums back there, you would have wet yourself, I tell you I, that one. I would. I, I may not even be here right now. <laughs> so we also have Adam Nashar, uh, El Nashar. I'm going to get that correct someday. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How about you guys? Hey, we are rocking. We we just, where were you, man? We were at the concert. We're having a good time. I was having for, uh, meeting all my friends down in the cities this last weekend. So, so you're down in Minneapolis. Nice. Yep, I was in Minneapolis, St. Paul, visiting all my northern Minnesota friends that I hadn't seen in like five years. You're forgiven this once. Yeah, next time. So we have the specialists of guests today. We have, finally, the guys from the Ohio Fish Rescue. We didn't even do the intro because this whole podcast is going to be doing an interview. And again, our subject of the day is talking about rescuing fish. We talk about it every intro of the podcast. We want to do an entire podcast about it. So who better than Big Rich and Josh? Introduce yourselves, gentlemen. Hey, how you doing? It's Big Rich here. And this is Josh. You guys are talking to Ohio Fish Rescue. So, we're, we, we, Jim has so many questions. I had uh, Adam and Jim do some homework on uh, you guys just to see exactly where your tanks are at and everything else. And we, uh, before the podcast, I had to like start cutting off questions like, no, no, ask them during the podcast. Come on, guys. <laughs> so, we again, appreciate you doing the time. We know you guys got a ton of work to do, so uh, can't thank you enough. But uh, before we get into the interview and questions, we got a little house cleaning to do. What's that? So, number one, we have emails again from uh, from listeners. Did your mom email us again? Uh, my mom did not. <laughs> She'd be like, "What are fish?" No, I'm just kidding. My mom's actually getting back into fish hobby. She kept a little bit uh, in her day, but she uh, she's actually got some koi bitters here on the counter for her, and she's uh, super excited to get back in. But our um, fan message us. Um, Leonard is his first name. His last name will be uh, held secret because that's what we do around here. And he said, good morning, guys. First and foremost, I want to say how much I enjoyed the podcast. You guys do a wonderful job. I was wondering if you could dedicate a podcast episode to just Placos. First, explain why no one should use a, or have a common Placo unless they have 125 gallon or larger. Then start with the basics of care, breeding, uh, talk about different varieties and why they cost so damn much. <laughs> <laughs> I love Placos and there are many to collect. Um, just to like them all like Koi or Guppy Aquarius do. Thank you. Look forward to the next episode of your podcast. Leonard. And he also sent us pictures of his collection and they look to be infant uh, hybrid bristlenose Placos. They have the nice black and white patterns. Okay. So inspiration right. of the pictures we're starting to get in from some of our audience without ever asking for them. We love your pictures. Thank you so much, Leonard. So we made a fan fish board on our website. So if you go to aquariumguyspodcast.com, at the bottom you'll see the fan fish board. And it'll be ch- ever-changing as more and more pictures come in. Again, we just have a few... Uh, um, listeners that sent us pictures with, with we never made a call for them so now that we're making a call any pictures you send us that you give us permission to we'll put them on the board and share with everybody this is a fun community and we love to see what you guys have or good or bad or, or even pictures of betty white you can just send them in those may not be posted on the board that's just for my personal yeah, go, collection yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for rich and josh you know you guys are on the podcast for the first time robbie has a very weird hey Hey, it's healthy. No, it's <laughs> weird. I'm a damn American. Right? He, he he loves a Betty White, and, and apparently Betty White has has some 
what would you say, Rob? Are they risque pictures? Or are they nude pictures on the internet? From- they are in the, uh, I think they're fifties or sixties. But she actually did uh, some poses before she was famous for a Playboy, like a pinup type thing. Yep. And we talked about this, I think, on our first episode. First episode, yeah. We, yeah. Got, we actually got a lot of response from that, and and uh, so you know, after we, we we go through the whole gamut of beautiful fish people that we can get a hold of, we're, we're going to try to track down Betty White before she dies. <laughs> Good luck. You keep saying that, uh, man. You keep saying that, but uh, we've only got. Well, she months. is in her nineties. She is, and she, yeah. you know, she is such a big pet. I think she's ninety-eight. Yeah, she's that. She she loves the pets. She loves uh, the Bob Barker type pets. You know, spayed and neuter your pets, take care of your pets. And, See, and Bob Barker fun. was secretly a convict um, keeper. That's why he he said that. <laughs> really? Right. Oh, you're making stuff up now. <laughs> No, but uh, Leonard, just want to do a shout out again, answering your question. Absolutely, we're going to do a Playco podcast. We have so many podcasts that are planned and so many guest uh, stars, but this is definitely on our list. We, uh, if someone's listening or someone has an, uh, a suggestion of who uh, we should bring on as that uh, Playco expert, we have a couple ideas. But certainly, give us a call, email us. Our contact info is on our website, AquariumGuysPodcast dot com. But uh, that is certainly in the making. Hey, and Leonard, one other thing too, if you want to check out. Amazonas magazine had a wonderful fancy Pleco uh, magazine. What was that about eight pages, nine pages? It was just a beautiful. Uh, it was article. a dedicated Pleco special. Yeah, and, it, yeah. But, and they had uh, some some uh, of the best Pleco people in that magazine, and they showed some of the pictures. And you just you look at this this uh, these pictures of all these Plecos, and you kind of go, "This guy has got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars." <laughs> Into just the equipment. I mean, it was just, it was really cool. So to go down our list, again, we are also looking into some sponsors. We've been contacted by a couple different people. So we're, what we're doing is we're not just sponsoring anyone. Again, this is a, the podcast is still pretty early, although we're getting a bunch of listens, and we're just blown away of how this is really blowing up. Yeah, thank out. you very much, everybody, for listening. <laughs> thank you. But what we're doing is if we're getting a sponsor, we're going to vet them. We're going to order some of their product. We're going to make sure that we've done our own tests in, uh, in-house here to make sure that you're getting a getting a quality product if we're going to put our name behind it. So look to see something in the future. And also, for those who are listening, events and expos. We, we want to hear what's uh, in your area, what expos you think that we should uh, go join. There's uh, definitely a couple different expos close to us. I know there's a really big one yearly in Chicago. And uh, even doing uh, you know more background homework to make sure we're doing our due diligence on the Ohio Fish Rescue, there is a monster expo. Is that correct, gentlemen? In Florida? Yes, sir. Yeah. Monster Fish Bash in Florida. So those are definitely on our list, but if there's something else that you guys uh, think that, you know, we just can't live without, we, we need the aquarium guys there, certainly uh, message that uh, to us as well. In uh, Chicago was Aquashella. Right. Well, there's actually more I, than that. There's a lot in Chicago. Right. Well, the, the, the big one we were just at was Aquashella, and we sat there and signed autographs for like six hours straight. It was crazy. So uh, where when was that? Lo- was it just recently, in the last few weeks? Yeah, that was uh, three, four weeks ago, three weeks ago. And they have, uh, it's put on by uh, Coral 12G. The guy's name is George. And uh, it's all like psychedelic. You walk in, there's just uh, fluorescent everything. And all the corals are lit up fluorescent. They have fluorescent uh, glow paints where they, they did the whole front of the place where you walk through. And there's like smoke going off and fluorescent and LED or black lights and fluorescent paints and it's just crazy and and then you have to wear these glasses to walk through the place that enhances the 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 color of the corals under the fluorescent and there is so many beautiful corals there and of course uh ohio fish rescue was there and we'd sign all the autographs and i was signing you know t-shirts and hats and even this one guy's belly wanted his belly signed and then he was going to get a tattoo of it it was crazy so I, I got a, I got a, que- a question. So when you're at these merch tables, do you ever sell like you know full mullet wigs? <laughs> you should do that, man. I'd buy one. So for those that don't know or haven't <laughs> watched the Ohio Fish Rescue uh, videos, uh, Rich has the best, the best, the best mullet I've ever seen in my life. It makes Billy Ray Cyrus look like a pussy. Joe Dirt is jealous. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, uh, <clears throat> Jimmy. <clears throat> What do, you, do you, what do you got there, Rob? You got you quit, will you quit staring at my tits already? Hey. I know I'm wearing this new Aquarium Guys t-shirt, and I know you're jealous because you need to buy yours tonight. Do I have to buy mine tonight? You do. The uh, I'm just going to buy I, mine tonight, too. I'm just going to wait for your mom to buy me one like she bought you one. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> Get up. See, 
I think the next uh, today we're, we're going to release the podcast tonight. It is Wednesday. I think you have tomorrow's the last day of 15% off. You certainly go to AquariumGuysPodcast.com. On the bottom, you'll see the merch store. We have a bunch of different choices. And again, I did make a terrible promise uh, a couple podcasts ago that if we get uh, 20 different people um, purchasing from the store, not 20, 20 total items, 20 different people purchasing, that I take pictures in an Aquarium Guys crop top. Oh, so God. still like, on. <laughs> as much as I regret it, I will do this. Rob's is a large gentleman. He's he's well, are you six two? I am six three. Six three. Three hundred and fifty pounds. That's a whole lot of man. Hey, hey, hey. Oh my goodness, you're a little bit bigger than me. <laughs> I just need the mullet. That's what I need. You you know what? I, I after we get off this, I'm gonna call Billy Ray Cyrus make fun of that pussy because he doesn't have a decent haircut. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, back in the day, I got to meet Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, I used to work for a grocery store for years and years and years, and we had a thing. Our event here is called We Fest, and it's the largest music country festival in the nation at the time. And Billy Ray performed. I delivered backstage, and there's Billy Ray and Trish. Um, and this was in the mullet days, and he had two little kids with him. I imagine one of them was Miley, and I probably should have ran her over, I guess. I don't know. Something. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so I got. Then you hit it like a wrecking ball. No, I'm not hitting it like a wrecking ball, you douche nugget. Douche nugget. <laughs> that is a new one nugget. for any wow. podcast. That's that's that, that's a new one. But that's any, going into the Christmas end of your clips there montage. <laughs> but uh, uh, Billy Ray, you know he he was rocking the mullet back then. I don't know if he's still doing it or not and stuff. But Rich has got some fabulous Fabio type hair. Check it out on YouTube. These guys have got a bazillion. Is it a bazillion? Probably more. D different videos on there, and uh, <laughs> and they often make fun of themselves and, as, as like we do. So it's a lot of fun. See, Check it out. We're just happy that Jimmy does fish because he clearly can't do math. <laughs> yeah, can't do math. <laughs> How much you put in there? Uh, ten milliliters. Just put a cap. <laughs> ten milliliters. Just take. Just, a, just put the cap in. Take a, take a swig out of the bottle and shut up. <laughs> Usually a cap just fixes everything. Yeah. That's... All right. Again, AquariumGuysPodcast.com, uh, bottom of the website, Fish Store. And, you know, let's get in the interview. Let's we've, get this going. We've done enough. We've, we've done enough damage. So, gentlemen, we, uh, again, thank you for coming. But uh, let's, a uh, couple things I want to cover is, number one, we want to know more about you, more about the background of what you guys do day to day and the, uh, you know, your organization. But uh, also, we want to hear some crazy stories of, of fish rescue. So, you know, one thing at a time. So, number one, you guys, of course, live in Ohio, and you guys are known for rescuing fish in your own personal extended house with over 80,000 gallons of aquarium space. So, right. what, you know, where did this all start? Let's when, start there. When did you become legally insane? That's what I want to know. Oh! I mean, when did you... Okay, leave? well, let's go back to... I think it was 1981. No, it's earlier than that because I was seven years old when my uncle gave me a 10 gallon tank. And I knew as soon as I had it, as I was setting it up, I needed bigger. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to a 20. And then within like a week, I went to a 55. And I was, I was like, this is, this is a tank. This is a big boy. And within a week, I was like, this is too small. This is, I need bigger. <laughs> and uh, that was the disease that hit me when I was a young kid. And, uh, you know, throughout life here, I raised three boys. And uh, my youngest, Josh, is on the podcast with us. He has already finished college, and he now he works as an engineer for the city of Cleveland. And uh, in, in that time of raising the three kids, we kept upgrading that whole time. And, uh, you know, now uh, wh what happened was is with his older brother, I got into the cars. Well, building cars and hot rods and all that, Josh was out there handing us tools, and he just hated it because, you know, me and Richie are working on the car, and Josh is handing us tools, and, you know, next thing you know, we'd find him passed out on the garage floor with his dog Flash, and, you know, the kid's like seven years old, and he's just tired of handing us things, and he goes to sleep. So now he grew up not liking cars. How do you not like cars? So now that Richie's gone and, and on his way in life, uh, me and Josh needed to get into something together. So, uh, you know, I built that Camaro that's in our videos all the time uh, with Richie. So now I needed something to get into with Josh. So, uh, you know, we already at this point had a 1,000-gallon tank and uh, a few other tanks. And uh, 
I, you know, I decided to get into the fish with him because he really got into fish. I mean, he was always excited when I got a new fish, and he was now old enough to start looking for deals and finding fish and be, you know, surprising me with the deal he found. So we started this fish rescue thing, and well, mostly because we had big tanks and word of mouth gets around. So all of our friends, all of our our people are, are you know, handing us fish left and right, and you know, it's just it's we were getting overrun with fish. And so, you know, I, I decided to start this Ohio fish rescue thing and me and Josh would, you know, build it up into what we can. And it's a father and son together thing, you know, and uh, a lot of these little rescues start up because they want free fish. And, you know, you got a guy with a 125 gallon and a 90 gallon and a 55 gallon and he starts a rescue in New Hampshire or something. It's not a rescue. It's a guy wanting free fish, uh, you know. There's a lot of good-hearted people out there that do start rescues and can only do what they can do with what little they have. But we were able to do more, so we did more. And, uh, you know, it's all about the fish at this point. So when we get fish in and, you know, we're, we're trying to show them off to people uh, as don't don't buy these because look how big they get. Here, Here's one at four foot. Here's one at five foot. Here's this, you know, they, they get up to three foot and you have them in a 55 gallon. What are you going to do? <laughs> and, uh, you know, so on. And, and it just, it built from there. So now we are running Ohio fish rescue and things have just, just spun wildly out of control. So just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> yeah. understatement of the century, bro. So Josh, from your perspective, like you're not sick of it, are you? We just want to make sure that you're not leaving, you know, we sure you're handing him uh, tools and pumps and filters, but uh, we we hope that you stay in the hobby. Have you watched the the, the, the videos? <laughs> well, yeah, but we handed him what? tools and pumps and filters. Oh, there you go. We're Thank the, you. Yeah, we're basically trying to figure out who's a little crazier. Oh, I'm gosh. usually the one that has to get in the tanks, who has to catch all the fish out of the tanks, clean the tanks. He usually gets in there. He'll he'll you know put up all the fish food and feed them. He'll, he'll make sure everything's good on a daily basis. And I come home from work, uh, you know, jump in the tank, fix this, fix that. I'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a little, little burst, a couple hours here, a couple hours there, and we'll get some sort of project done. So say we got to move this tank tonight, I'll come in. That's where you see all the action on most of the, 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 the videos. And then all the, the more boring stuff that you guys don't really want to see, that's when we do it in our off time. Either I'll spend time on, on myself doing it, he'll do it while I'm at work, and we just try and keep on going together and, you know, work as a team to try and get this whole organization ahead. So besides the fish that you guys rescue, is there, like, a, a Josh and Rich section, like, these are my fish, those are his fish? Oh, yeah. Yes, there's, we have these things mine. called Arapimas. <laughs> They are our fish, and we have Brutus is the biggest one. He's about 40 inches now, and before Brutus, there was Big Bubba. Now, he was five foot, and everyone knew us for our big Arapaima. Uh, the problem was, you know, this was 10 years ago, and, uh, you know, he, he stopped eating one day. Then the next day, he didn't eat, so we're starting to get worried. The third day, he was dead. We didn't know at that time about septicemia. Here's the problem. You're looking down at the fish, and you don't see the red streaks on their underbelly. And they needed a shot of antibiotics. Well, that was the biggest problem. We lost a lot of fish to this over the years and never knew what it was, never knew why they died. You know, if a fish just stops eating and three days later he's dead, you know, that you, you chalk that up as a unknown death type syndrome. And, uh, you know, later we find out more and more and more, and, you know, we learn as we go. Um, to where now we need a, uh, a, a vet on hand or somebody that can come by and prescribe antibiotics and let us know exactly how much to give, you know, a certain pound fish to save him from this disease, which that can be saved, but they can only be saved by a shot of antibiotics, which you don't run into in a normal fish you know environment i mean how many times have you given your your fish shots you, you, nobody ever has this is something that comes up into public aquariums sea worlds you know zoos and uh you know we could have saved some fish over the years if we'd have known about this 
So right now, that is our biggest problem. We need to have either like an intern or a uh, a vet that's willing to work with us, you know, and uh, help us out that way. Uh, we now know how to, you know, figure out what, what fish has septicemia. That's the one disease we haven't been able to, you know, bring fish back from. We've figured out everything else. But septicemia is, you know, you get the red streaks in the belly and their butthole gets really extended and, and huge. And you don't see it because you're looking down at the fish and you're only seeing the top of them like koi. Um, it's not just septicemia either. It's a more specific kind of septicemia and it's enteric septicemia. And it mostly right. strikes in catfish and, and barbs. So and the only thing I've heard of, of is catfish. Largest, yeah, that's that's one of our largest uh, type of fish we get, our catfish. And what, so, what is that caused by? Do you, uh, is there anything specific that brings that on? Um, the catfish, uh, you know, just like humans, you, you know, you can be, you know, feeling great forever, and then all of a sudden you come down sick. Whether you went outside in your bare feet in the snow or or you just were exhausted that day, somehow your body your immune system got worn down, and then you got sick. Well. All these diseases are actually in fish, just like they're in humans, but your immune system fights it off. Well, when a sick gets transported, they are in stress, and these diseases can come out. They can shine and take over, and, uh, you know, that's where we get a lot of our problems from. And, uh, you know, the septicemia seems to be the hardest thing to come back from. You know, we, we, we completely believe in fresh water changes daily sometimes we've even done 75 percent water changes with ro water and you know same exact temperature dechlorinated ro water before and then you know they're living in beautiful prime water every day being changed and you know that cures a lot of sicknesses believe it or not yeah. um salt cures a lot of diseases and then you know that you have your you know different uh, medications that help cure but nothing cures septicemia other than a shot of, of uh, antibiotics. So there's where we're, we're, we hit a brick road. You or I cannot go to the store and buy a shot of antibiotics. It's just not sold. It's not, it's not readily available. So there's where we need the most help is uh, a, vet, a veterinarian or a vet assistant, somebody that has access to this. And uh, when I, I, call and say you know this fish has got this disease you know i have a microscope i can check it out uh when this fish has this disease i need this type of antibiotics they're willing to subscribe it or prescribe it to us and we can give it to the fish so the only you time know, that's the only time i've ever uh dealt with injections is like three four times i've had uh, people come with specialty koi and one with an alligator gar and again, I did. Okay. You couldn't get this out over the counter. You had to go to a vet. And the look that I got from my veterinarian when I had to ask for antibiotics is like, for what again? And this dude's used to dealing with, right. with cows. Deal with He's just well, fish. Really? Like how big a fish? And I, you know, I tell him, well, it's you know. 30 inches. I have to have something. Well, he's he's pulling out textbooks going, yeah, I think this is what the dose you're going to need. I'm like, all right, we'll give it a go. You know where to poke it in, right? Yeah, I got that. We're, we're okay. Last week we had Julie Filto from Secrets Farms on. And okay, we've been there quite, I've been there probably 15 times. Rob's been there a couple times with me. And they really? ha they have a vet on staff with, what did you say, three well, it's it's a it's a yeah, um, three techs. It's a three techs. Yeah, senior vet with uh, three other. Um, um, they either have interns or actual other, other techs. Right. So they've got four right. people on staff there all the time to treat their stuff. Because that's of course, what we need here. You know, and we can reach out to her and and see if because they work with the Florida Fish Co-op and uh, the different people, and they should be able to to send us in the right direction, and maybe we get you guys a, a little bit of help and a little bit of relief there. It's a rare deal when awesome. you have to deal with these uh, these type of diseases, and there's no one out to reach to. Like, who else has you know a eight foot arapaima in their house? Yeah, <laughs> no, but no idea exactly. how to deal with this. Just some crazy people in Ohio, I tell you that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so you walk through everything. You, you started out hobby. You and Josh have been doing this uh, a full bore, and you started, uh, you know, word of mouth, telling people that you know they understood you had large tanks, and then you started uh, taking in. You know, when was the point where you get realize, you know, the first time you had to like, oh boy, we have to extend the house. 
Okay, that was uh, – wow, <laughs> good question. That was uh, basically when we started the 501c3. Uh, we got that through, and then, you know, at this point it was all word of mouth. People just would, you know, bring us fish or, or call us and ask us if we could take their fish because everyone around, you know, once somebody gets a big tank, it gets word of mouth out there. And we had a bunch of big tanks. <laughs> Um, once we went 501c3 and we started, you know, talking about it on, on Facebook, I mean, we had people coming out of the woodwork bringing us fish. And now at this point, I wasn't into it as much as we are now. So I didn't have a outlet for these fish. I just thought, well, I've got, at, I think at that point we had 18,000 gallons or something of, of just fish tanks. Um, just 18,000, so, you know, just, just a couple, <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> we were laughing our butts well, off the here. Fish just feeder guppies. And, and, you know, they kept, kept coming in and kept coming in. And the most thing was Pacus. So, you know, I had all these fish and I'm getting overrun and I was getting worried. It wasn't until Greg Woodstock, uh, came out here and he's the pond guy, uh, from, from Aquascape is his company. Uh, he came out here and he turned our, our, pool into a natural uh ecosystem aquascape ecosystem and now we can have predators in it yeah right it's our our predator pond and now we we had an outlet we had more area but the problem was the fish kept on adding up so we started getting frantic and we were calling every every uh public aquarium around now as you guys know Public aquariums don't take from, uh, you know, the general public no more. You know, you can't be Joe Smith and call him up and say, I have a, a fish. You know, we take it. They, they'll just tell you no because they were run over with, you know, diseases, bacteria, you know, uh, all kinds of different things. You have so to they be on the end. Taking from public, right. Um, they stopped taking from the public. And now... With our our Ohio Fish Rescue getting such a great you know uh, reputation, we started talking to different uh, public aquariums, and now we started working with two or three. Next thing you know, it's like seven. Now we we have like twelve aquariums we work with, and then there is a network of new aquariums opening up, and they're all calling us for fish. We don't charge them nothing because. If we can give them a three or a four thousand gallon tank, or even a a, a pool, um, they can give them a thirty thousand gallon, you know, South American display tank with a vet on staff and better food. You know, so I only get rid of the fish to better places. Like if we get an Oscar in, we can keep the Oscars here. But if you have a two hundred gallon tank or three hundred, and you want the Oscars, you can take the Oscars. But, you know, if you, we have, you know, Tiger Shovel Nose in the 3,000-gallon tank and you come at me and you want, you know, you just got a new 125 and you want a 30-inch Tiger Shovel Nose. Well, I'm sorry. I, I can't feasibly give you this 30-inch 30, 30 Tiger Shovel Nose that came out of a 3,000-gallon and he's going to go live his life in a 125? No. So we only get rid of our fish when they're in better conditions than we can give them. Um. And it's worked. And now we're working with a bunch of different public aquariums. And now Seaquest or Seacrest is it Seacrest or Seaquest, Josh? Seaquest. Okay, Seaquest is a uh, a company that opens up a bunch of uh, public aquariums across the United States. We donated to them about two months ago. Their first place in New Hampshire. They opened up a new uh, uh, public aquarium. And then uh, they just called me like two days ago. And want more fish for the a new public aquarium they're opening up. This helps us out a lot. Now we have a, a strict quarantine system we go through, and the public aquariums know this, so they're willing to take from us. And because it's a new public aquarium, they need fish. So it's a I help you, you help me situation. So I don't win. charge them nothing. I give them the fish for free because they're getting better care than they could at my place. So we have to talk after the podcast. We're also uh, up north. We have a different network. Um, again, Jimmy's been wholesaling for you know thirty plus years, and I've been helping him uh, with that in the last few years. And uh, to do that, we've actually been. I've reached out to the DNR. We're on the uh, Minnesota DNR list for anybody that wants to get rid of fish or help out in extreme situations. And we've done a lot of rescues okay. ourselves. And we get in touch with a lot of local zoos as well. And 
there's a particular issue, and I'll, I'll even talk about it on air. I think it's an interesting issue. Um, we have the Red River Zoo in Fargo that is... I like that zoo. It's a, it's a wonderful little zoo. They have red pandas. They have a lot of weird um, things you really don't see in even big zoos. And they're smaller, but they have had a um, buffalo head uh, collection of this uh, type of carp. And it's got such high ratings. And they have these crazy attractions, yet these big, you know, wild-type uh, carp get all kinds of love. Some of them passed away of old age. They've had them forever, and the guys that got them from in the past had them forever. So they were truly full lifespan on the fish, and they're still looking for more. So we'll have to chit-chat after the podcast to see if you know of anything. Okay, great. So now you have all of these connections to move fish at. So right now, just to give perspective, I want to know... Number one, you know, what's the most common fish you see? And two, how many total fish you see on what basis? Okay, here's the biggest, biggest problem fish we have. Now, I love Paku. They are very personable fish. They become like a, a, a house pet, a house dog. They're, I mean, they're very smart. They're great fish, and I'm not saying they're not. Here's the problem. They sell for like... Two dollars and ninety nine cents a piece at at two inches, three inches, and they look like piranha. And uh, anybody that can walk into a major, you know, supply store can can buy three or four paku uh, because they're cheap and a ten gallon tank and go home. Well, guess what? In two weeks from now, they're too big for that ten gallon tank. Three weeks from now, they're too big for that, you know, twenty gallon tank. And uh, two months from now, they're too big for the 55-gallon tank you just bought for them. So they grow way too fast. They're they're very cheap as babies, and it's the biggest problem fish I have. And what I mean by that is I might get 10 Paku all between 18 and 26 inches or so, and then I'll get a red tail catfish, and then I'll get another 10 Paku, and then I'll get a tiger shovel nose. I'll get another five or six Paku, and then I'll get a marble cat. So you see the pattern there arising. There's just way too many Paku. Now, it ain't that the Paku's a bad fish. It's the Paku grow way too fast, and they're too cheap as a baby. Red tails are $20 for a, a, a three-inch baby. Paku are two ninety nine. Tiger shovel nose are twelve ninety nine as a baby. Bakus are two ninety nine, <laughs> so you're seeing the, the the problem there, and it's a great fish. It really is. I mean, if you want a fish that wants to live with you and your family for a long time, Paku are great. Get, buy one five hundred gallon tank and one Paku, and let it grow. And next thing you know, he's sitting there playing with your dog. I mean, it's a great fish, but they're too cheap and they grow too fast, and it's the biggest problem I have. So, and here's the here's the the next kicker about it. When I I get new public aquariums opening up, they want all the red tails I can get, all the tiger shovenos, all the terashuki cats or or ripsaw cats. They want marble cats. They don't want no paku because they can get them everywhere. So I have the biggest problem getting rid of adult pakus, and I have no problem getting rid of adult any other fish. So. I, I now give out a uh, a window cling. It says this store is backed by Ohio Fish Rescue, and that's only for stores that agree not to sell Paku. <laughs> now, that's a great that, idea, well, it, right? But here's the thing: you can still special order a Paku from that store, and I won't frown on it. But that's a person that really wants a Paku and has a, a setup for it, and, and that's fine. What it's doing is stopping the average mom from taking her 10 year old kid in there and they buy three or four Paku for a 10 gallon tank because they don't know that's what it's stopping. So, uh, you know, we, we give these stickers out to any pet store that's willing to agree to this and that will help the problem. I really don't have a problem getting rid of anybody's 36 inch red tail catfish. I keep two or three of the biggest fish here to show people how big they get and then i keep all family named pets like if you've had a red tail cat for 19 years and his name is slasher he can come here and stay at the rescue and you can come visit him he'll stay here forever i won't find him another home 
but which I think that's a really nice thing to do. That's people, insane. But, yeah, people can you know come and visit their pets. Do, do you take small but, children? You know, <laughs> this is that? Billy. Billy, can he stay here? Do you take small children? <laughs> My kids are grown up, right. and I'll drop them off. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the the problem is the the paku fish. So that is our main biggest problem, and it's not because the fish is a bad fish. The fish is one of the better fish to have because they're. I mean, like flower horns, Oscars, they all have personalities. But the Paku seem very smart, and they they really get to know you. And they're like having a dog they, or a cat. They're very, very personable. So, uh, so I would suggest people, you know, if you want to get a three to 500-gallon tank and you want to get a Paku, that'll be your, your friend for life for the next 30 years. They're great fish. But, you know, I don't want them readily available in stores where kids can buy them. Mommy, mommy, he looks like a piranha, you know, and they don't know. And they th That's the, the basis of all my problems is that scenario right there. So the I was gonna, Oh, go ahead, Adam. Sorry. I was going to say from a retail store point, that's they actually put them on the list as vegetarian piranha. And so See? everybody sees everybody sees piranha because I used to have a retail store. Everybody sees piranha. Everybody wants a piranha, but then parents go, well, what if they bite my kid? Blah, 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 which they don't. And so they go, well, this one's vegetarian. And so the people go, oh, I'll take that one. And they're cheap. And I they never are sold very them because I, I, I never sold any because they just got – I knew they'd get so big, and then I'd have to deal with it later, you know, as the only store in like a 200-mile radius. Oh, but, yeah, people bring the fish back to the store they bought it from. Yep, and then it's uh, where am I going to find a place to put a big paku? But literally, they'll wait, they'll wait, wait, them. wait. Have you never heard of Ohio fish? Recipe? I'm just going to say <laughs> oh that. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is before I heard about you guys. I know, I know. So, Rich, I got I got a quick question. How many times do you get up in the morning, go outside, and there's a five gallon bucket sitting on your front step with a paku? Oh, my God, that happens. I, I can't believe you know that. That actually happens, and it, and, and it scares me, and it actually upsets me. I want people to call me, set up a drop-off time. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it. I've never said no to any fish, and I will not say no to any fish. But please, please get a hold of me. You know, some way. Text me on Facebook. You know, talk to me on, on, on uh, YouTube. I don't care. But please set up a drop-off time because a lot of times I'm, I'm downtown Cleveland working on my properties and I come home from work and there's six one-gallon plastic Ziploc baggies sitting in front of my garage with fish in them. Now, okay, so how long have they been sitting there? Or, you know, have they been there all day? Is, is it too hot? Is it too cold? I don't know any of this. I just come home and I'm, I'm surprised by there's fish in my driveway. I'm, you know, are they alive? Oh my God! Let me let me get to these right away. Please, people, just set up a time to drop them off, and I'll make sure somebody is there. Um, and and you know, a lot of times people come to the house, and we're in the back, and don't realize that the rescue is an addition to my house. So we're in the back working in the rescue, and somebody knocks on the door, and they leave it out front. Well, that don't help because we don't know they're there. Send us a text. Help some way. Do a little more. Um, you know, we come home one time, and there was about a hundred goldfish in my pond that I've never seen before, <laughs> and they were all—I swear to God, guys—they were all covered in like fin and tail rod. There was like uh, oh, big man. tumors off their side, and now I have to spend probably about one hundred and fifty dollars in medication to try and fix all these fish where I could have quarantined them and, you know, spent $20 in meds and healed the same amount of fish. You know, please don't do that. Just call me, get a hold of me, text me something, set up a drop-off time, and I'll be there. So the reason... You want to come get fish? Go ahead. The reason that Jimmy was asking that is because we both had the same issue. <laughs> so uh, me, I had it because um, I had a, I have a pond outside the back of my prior house I used to live at. 
and people just knew me as the the fish guy I sold online, you know. And I already had self report with the DNR, but no, what I have is people didn't go as brave as to dump them in my pond. Instead, I get home and there'd be like four buckets r- lined around the outside of my pond in random spots, and they would just have random goldfish, koi, whatever was the flavor of the month that just showed up at my door. And it was always around that, you know, right before the first frost time when I'm just, you know, kind of closing right. down the pond for the year, because that's when people don't want them at that point in Minnesota. Everything gets a hard freeze. So if you don't have a six foot deep pond, they they just flush them. It's it's a real oh, big problem God. in Minnesota. So some of our rescues that we we've, we've dealt with is uh, you said about the Paku. So we have problems with Paku, not, not near probably as bad as you because you get a big collective. But Paku, Oscars, Oscars, and Oscars, goldfish up the wazoo because again, like we said in Minnesota, the freeze. So no one gets to continually keep them, and no one wants to bring them inside. So we get, I'd say, on an average season. Last season, I probably got what, Jimmy? A thousand, fifteen hundred goldfish. At least, yeah. That was a that was a small a small year for us. But showing up on uh, showing up on our doorstep, just goldfish. That was nothing else. Wow. So that's uh, that's our curse. Well, see, we 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 get that same thing here, but it's because of in the summertime we have churches, we have uh, like different cities that do this. This this is retarded. But they, they take their pools and they stop putting chlorine in and they put fish in and then they think it's an event where they can invite everybody up there to go fishing and, you know, they get to take the fish home that they catch. I've only well, heard about this. Fish, yeah. You heard about that? I've only the heard fish about that it. they catch, um, they, they either take them home and they either take care of them or they don't and they end up here. Or the fish that they don't catch now... The, I've got a priest or a minister or a, a, a civil uh, servant of the city calling me saying, can you take these fish? And I'm like, you mean the fish that you just took out of a, a nice, safe environment and put them into a non-chlorinated pool where there's no filtration, and then you had people fishing all day, catching or not catching and releasing and, and put them through stress, and now you want me to take your sick fish. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. No, no worries. So yeah, I get a lot of that, and it, you know it, it upsets me. But I never said no to any fish. Yeah. So but... I spend the money and the time and the effort, and we get the fish healthy, and uh, <coughs> <coughs> then we find homes for them. Or you know, uh, we've got our front pond is more like a take a penny, leave a penny. If you need goldfish, come on by. We'll give you some. Excellent. If you, that have extra goldfish come on by we'll take them and you know I, i'll put them in my pond but please give me the chance to quarantine them first see our event is we have these uh county fairs minnesota I, i'd say above <coughs> any state probably minnesota maybe wisconsin we're known for all of our weird festivals for no apparent reason we make stuff up just to get we, have a party just to give you an idea yeah. we have a town next to us called and when they have this 20 years of doing this of a testicle festival they you know chop off all the uh <laughs> The calves' balls and the freeze them. The Testicle Festival. Yes. It is. <laughs> they deep fry them, mince them up, and you have a big old platter of balls to eat. And that it's a big big to do around here. So and then you drink some beer. Minnesota's filled Crazy. with weird, obscure. You want to go to the Minnesota Testicle Festival? Hell yeah! Hey, we will. No, like- honey, you can have all the balls you want to eat. <laughs> Gobble them right up. Yeah. You know what? We're, we're going to set you up. We're going to send you a big plate of balls. <laughs> we're, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to get a big old bucket of balls, and I'm going to just leave them on their doorstep. It just happened. It was <laughs> September. Minute, guys, I think i got to go. <laughs> oh, no. No, we got all night, man. <laughs> so uh, in saying that, we have all these obscure festivals, and what we do is you know, county and city fairs are everywhere. Every tiny, <laughs> dinky town across the state of Minnesota has their own summer fair. And what they do okay. is they all hire these shitty, I don't know, what do you call them? Like carnival? Carnival Carnies. people. Carnies. And all they do is Carnies. set up. A bunch of different like coin or uh, a ping pong toss to win a goldfish. Ping pong toss, all kinds of shit. Yeah, we we have that, and we have it in such supply that they'll go in the area and they'll wipe out every Walmart they can stop by and buy all the goldfish and just keep them in barrels in the back of their well, truck. Well, now they can't. Walmart has stopped selling goldfish and everything else except for hard right. goods. Right. Yay for Walmart because there was so many bad treated fish in there. But, you know, the problem isn't going to stop there. It's going to transfer to another store. Right. It just kind of, it just trickles down the trickle-down effect like poop rolls downhill. 
So what is the weirdest or rarest rescue you guys have ever done? Well, there was this, this Chinese guy named John Trung. He called me up and he says, look, I have to be relocated. I'm moving from Ohio to Michigan. And uh, I have my prized platinum gars, alligator gars. They cost me 3500 for the uh, male and 4500 for the female. Can you please hold on to them while I change, you know, addresses? And I'm like, sure, of course, you know, I'd, I'd love to, you know, I'd love them, 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 them fish. And he brought them here and he said it would take about six months. So I feel like you still have them. six months. <laughs> What's that? I feel like you still have them. <laughs> about six months later, I got no call. Seven months, eight months, nine months, no call. And I'm like, you know, these guys are getting way too big for the tank I have them in. And, uh, you know, even my people online were saying something about why are they in that little of a tank? And it was a 550 gallon, but I had it split off. So they were in like, you know, two, two twenty five gallon and my stingrays were on the other side. And, uh, you know, the next thing you know, he calls me and he's like, you know, I, I broke my tank moving and I'm not I, I thought I was going to be able to, but I can't. So what I want you to do is go ahead and sell them. Don't take no less than three thousand and thirty five hundred for each one and uh, sell them and keep the money for the rescue. And I'm like, as much as we need the money here, I'll tell you what, I'll do you one better. I know you love your fish. I will keep them here forever and you can come visit them and we'll just go from there. And uh, they've now grown to our three foot platinum alligator gars and they are the highest quality platinum gars I have seen. I've seen a bunch at predatory fins. I've seen a couple at my, at my Chinese buddy's house. None of them have all spot on white body like these two. And, you know, every other one I see has got like a little black trim on the tail or their fins, or you can see some of the, the, the normal coloration on their side. None of them are pure platinum like these two. These are the two highest quality I've seen. And they have grown with us, and now they're 36 inches apiece, and they're in the pool. My Lord, that's a lot of fish. Have you, <laughs> have you, uh, no. you know what's neat is when you're in the pool and they come up to check you out, you think they're coming up and going to bite you. But the few brave people that have, have kept the camera on them, they've actually come up and touched their nose to the camera and then swam away. But other people have ran screaming out of the pool. <laughs> so uh, no nipple piercings no nipple. when you go in your pool. <laughs> Take your nipple piercings off, yeah. And your other things, yeah. No, the weird <clears throat> stuff that we've ever uh, ever dealt with for, for rescues, I'm trying to think, uh, is... well. I've dealt with uh, white uh, sturgeon, which is decently not common, but they're native to Minnesota. So we got oh, actually. I would love to have one. Uh, I, I, if I come across it, and I probably will, you'll be my first phone call. But white sturgeon, awesome. they they actually farm them um, for two different purposes: one for pets, which is rarely done, and the mostly they they do for DNR farming because they're trying to repopulate in certain areas. And okay, I was great. able to get that pushed out to the DNR. It was nice and small. It came in a shipment that we got. Uh, it was a, a wrong order, and they weren't going to take it back. So what am I supposed to do with a, you know, six-inch sturgeon? So I found a home for that. And uh, we have, what did we name him, Charlie the Catfish that we still have? Oh. I think it's Charlie the Catfish. The Charlie the Catfish. He's going to be. So Wait, you have a catfish that you still have, and you still don't remember his name? No, no, because here's the deal. He's he's the bane of our existence. <laughs> Rob's keeping him at my house. Yes. It's Rob's fish. It's my fish. That's somebody at Jimmy's, and there's a purpose. So we got I got the fish as a rescue. <laughs> it's, an, it's a large, oh, we got a decently small, but it's an albino channel catfish. And <laughs> this fish I, I uh, kept because he was nice and small size. I kept him in my koi pond until I could find him a place. So I reached out to different places. DNR wouldn't take him because the catfish are, uh, you know, potential d disease issue. You know, I've talked to Cabela's. Cabela's is a big uh, um, outdoors r retail chain, and they have yeah. in there. Their stores, giant aquariums with native fish only. Beautiful aquariums. Beautiful aquariums. Yeah, they do a good job. They wouldn't take it because now they outsource all of their aquarium stuff and they wouldn't refuse to talk to me. Zoos, I just got done talking with a bunch of different zoos, and the people that would take them did not have anything compatible because it would eat everything in their tanks. So, right. 
these have now been this fish has now been become with in and out of my koi. So I brought in my koi for the winter, brought it into my warehouse, and I have you know three giant uh, giant vats. I start with three hundred gallon. We went we went bigger, and I had on a trickle system. And this thing is absolutely the most impenetrable fish I've ever had. The city of Perm decided that uh, they're doing um, blowout lines of their uh, of the Perm water lines. And they post in the paper to let people know that, hey, your water is going to be brown on Tuesday. Well, I have this trickle system that automatically does water changes in my fish room. And right. it, it killed all of my, you know, two and a half foot koi. And the only thing that <laughs> oh lived through God. all of it, because they didn't put it in the paper, they didn't tell me ahead of time that this is going to happen. And the only thing that lived is that damn catfish. Yep. Went over there. And, wow. And went so, over there to find two and a half foot uh, koi floating. And the catfish, we thought, oh, he's gone too. So we assume that he's dead, right? And we're cleaning up all the fish. And, you know, we're all kind of angry and sad and teary-eyed because these are our pets. They're hand-fed. They're trained. They're, they're koi, right. koi are family fish. Really. Expensive koi also. Very expensive koi. So I'm going through, and we're just cleaning up the dead. And we didn't even pay attention that the catfish wasn't in there. So we just let the vat sit and we're shutting down the warehouse. We're pulling all fish out because we were emptying out and I shut down my, my online business and I go back in to take out the vats and here seven months later, he's alive. He's alive in two inches of pure green soup. Oh, there yeah. wasn't even water in there. There, uh, all there was, was an old airline connected that I somehow forgot to unplug. And he was in there for what seven this, years with no food an albino channel catfish. And he was in good shape. Oh, channel catfish can live hours on land. They they breathe air. They're, they're 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 crazy. It was incredible. They, they can live through anything. And and when we pulled him out, and we got oh, this is, and he was fat. I mean, he was not skinny. I mean, I expected him to be really right. Gone. He's been eating good. He's been eating something. He was eating all the algae that was in there. But it was the whole warehouse right. for seven months was shut off, so there's no heat. So it was forty degrees in that uh, warehouse the entire time. So he wasn't able to process food. That's okay. That's okay. He had all, all he had was an airline. There's no filter. And he had maybe two inches of water. So his top fin was sticking out of the water. Seven months. He didn't get a, a, a bacterial infection from his top fin sticking out? No. no. We were blown away. He must have splashed it in That's there. That's crazy. So Charlie the catfish oh, has been in thing. utter darkness, 40 degree weather, and in two inches of wa- a soup. It wasn't yeah, even it was water. four inches of water, yeah. It With was, no, wa- no food. No food, no nothing. And he's alive. So we pull him out. We're blown away. I take him into my house. And at the time, I didn't have anything set up and prepped for him. Jimmy has a breeding uh, room down in the bottom of his uh, house and with large tanks. It's mixed. He's got shrimp, all kinds of stuff. He, he does a lot of angelfish breeding. And it's uh, we kept him there. And he gets all the dead fish because uh, Jimmy still wholesales. So he gets a lot shipped in. He quarantines. And he gets everything that's dead. He has a very, very full diet almost all times. Sometimes I have to look nice. at them. sometimes nice. I have to look at the fish and go, Nothing died today. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes well, up. Hey, you know when a fish deserves to live, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No kidding. He's he's uh, something else. Yeah. And now he comes up and knocks on the glass and goes, Hey, butthole, feed me. <laughs> and so and so I uh, <clears throat> Rob's and I were just at, in Minneapolis at a koi show not too long ago and and Rob somehow bought 25 pounds of uh, koi pellets, so now he gets koi pellets because nobody died today. It was the high protein uh, youth pellet stuff, so it's it's a catfish, man. Yeah, and it keeps growing. So it just I, keeps growing. So if I'm, I'm they a, eat anything, they really do. So if if you happen to get an albino channel catfish in a bucket in front of your house, it wasn't from us. <laughs> just <laughs> just saying. We'll put it in the I tote. have a couple of them now, one in my albino tank about two foot, and then one in my uh, 750 about a foot and a half. So they're, they're good fish. Uh, actually, the albino channel cat at my house, I don't know if you saw the video, but we set up the 2,200-gallon tank in all, like, uh, Greek-Roman uh, sculptures and, and these, like, ruins and stuff. He got caught inside of the... Uh, I don't know what you are, the Colosseum ruins, and in between two uh, columns. And uh, I, we come home, and he's like, oh, my God. He's red as can be, like blood red, like bloody red. And I have to pick him up. I pick up the columns, and I have to cut through it with a pair of uh, pipe cutters. And uh, I'm clamping through it. Finally, I cut through it, and I bend it over far enough to where he can get out. 
and he went straight to floating upside down on top of the water. I was like, oh, my God, I doubt this fish is going to make it. But, you know, I came out the next morning, and that channel cat was back at the bottom, hardly had no red on him. He was His fins were tore up, but the red around his body was gone. And, you know, he's still living today, doing great. They're, they're amazing fish. Bulletproof. So, Jimmy, you, right. you had a ton of questions for him before we started the podcast. Oh, I, I was t- I was telling Rob's earlier, and I, and uh, before we went on air here, the um, I just got our local uh, Otter Tail Power Company is, is who we have that supplies our electricity, and uh, my wife and I have a a five bedroom house, and, but it's just her and I, but we happen to have like 30, 40 aquariums downstairs, and I've got a few heaters plugged in, and uh, I got a thing from Otter Tail Power today saying, you know, you're you're using ninety percent more electricity than the majority <laughs> of your neighbors. And I'm just wondering to myself, and so just before the podcast, my wife and I were watching uh, you guys on YouTube, and she looks at me, she goes, ask him how much of their electricity bill is. And I go, he'll probably have to kill me. It would be 98%, but you have me as a neighbor. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, actually, it's actually not that much. It's about 450 a month. Wow. That, um, that's impressive. That is really good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, we don't use no electric heaters in any of our tanks. I use a gas garage heater on the ceiling, and it's called a Mr. Garage Heater. And basically, all of this is a furnace from your basement that hangs on the ceiling, and there's a flame, and it goes through the pipes, and the fan blows over the pipes. Well, with the flame in the room, it makes the room dry. Like, have you ever had, in the wintertime, your furnace is on, and if you rub your feet against the carpet, you, you can shock each other? Yes. Uh, that's because of how dry it gets. Well, your fish room is, is moist. If you had that kind of heater in your fish room, well, it would work for you and dry it out. So it never gets that dry in the fish room, but it keeps it from being over moist. Um, the heater runs, keeps it at 80 degrees all, all year long. Um, summertime comes, you know, it may get up to 90 in the day and the heater ain't on. But it might get down to 70 at night and the heater kicks on. So, you know, all winter long, it, it's on day and night. And, you know, it's just a gas. It's it's like maybe two foot by three foot gas furnace and hanging just, on the ceiling. Just natural and, gas. And, uh it works great. It keeps all of our tanks at 80 degrees, 79 degrees if they're on the floor, 80, 81 if they're up high, um, you know, because the cement is still tied into the surrounding ground. So it, it's colder on the floor, of course. Um, so we don't, that was the cheapest way we found. So our gas bill is about 450 in the wintertime. And, uh, you know, total bills are about 1600 a month. And it's, it's been coming out of my pocket for the last, I don't know, 10 years. And we started, you know, this whole thing on Facebook. And we, we tried asking for, we, we put up a GoFundMe, we put up a PayPal, we put up a Patreon. And that gives people three different options, a way to help us out. If you want to, you know, you can't come visit, you can't come over and help, you can send money and help, or you can send food, you know. And this whole thing worked out great, but... You know, at the most, we were making maybe three hundred dollars a month from people donating. Well, now it's it's down to about maybe eighty bucks a month. the The thing is, I don't need to ask people to help me with my vision on you know what I want to do with my future. I wanted, you know, once I got the five hundred one c three, I wanted to ask companies who caused the problem, and we're talking. Do you want me to name names? Uh, that's up to you. Okay. Petco, Pet Supplies Plus, Petland, you know, uh, uh, all, all, the, all the major grocery store stores that sell these fish and cause the problem, you know. They don't tell the people, well, ma'am, you can't buy them three Paku with that 10-gallon tank, you know. They just sell it and don't have a a, a, a thought otherwise. See, we well, we have a lot of hate on the podcast, and generally we use the the keywords, uh, you know, schmelta. You know, <laughs> okay. We, we've got well, so many people know, in the industry. I'm not that we hating don't like on it. them, people. You know, it's it, the problem is they do do the deed. They sell these fish, and they sell them really, really cheap. 
the Paku are, you know, two ninety nine for a, a three inch Paku. And it looks like a red belly, like you said, an, a, a, a vegetarian red belly piranha. So they're glorifying it. And, and, you know, that's the biggest problem. So, you know, I don't know. It, 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 it kills me, but I'm not, I'm not down in them. But I think that if I'm going to ask for money, it should be from the people that caused the problem. So I don't, you know, ask Joe Schmo, general person, you know, please help us, you know, donate to us. I don't do that no more. I, I only try and get from the stores. And, uh, you know, that that's not working out that well. I was just going to ask <laughs> yeah. you. Good luck. So how, how many six-figure six checks did you get from, from <laughs> these guys? <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I can count. I can count, you know, how many six, wait, six-figure checks? Six-figure checks. Six figures, yeah. One million dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never gotten done like that. Never got that. <laughs> the the biggest uh, thing that I see that I, is a it's a bigger craze, and this blows my mind. And this is just from me, you know, YouTube scouring to see what kind of content there is because we you know we have to stay relevant, and it's my hobby above all else. So that, how else am I gonna you know keep up on Ohio Fish Rescue? But YouTube, and we see a right. bunch of these. How do we say millennial douchebags deciding <laughs> that they're going to get views by pretending to be a activist. And they'll say, oh, these poor fish were just being abused, so I had to go buy them from Petco. Um, oh, I hate let, Let's people. pause you right there for a minute. If you're, if you're thinking that you're going to be an activist because you see issues at Petco where they're selling the wrong types of fish or they're mistreating betas, and then you're going to spend your money buying the betas, it's the biggest scam of all they're time. I've got betas yeah, for them too. You're helping them sell their fish, and they're going to go and replace them with more. If you think for a minute that doing anything like that, or, or even videotaping and trying to use that as an educational moment, will help, that's not going to do it. You would cover it, nope. talk about how it's wrong, and for God's sakes, don't spend your money in that establishment if you feel that that's what's happening there. You know, it's the dollar that businesses go. If they're not selling, they're going to the see why and address it. Dollar decides everything absolutely hey i got a quick question for you rich so we're yes sir we're watching the videos and stuff and seeing all these large fish and, and they all have large appetites you're keeping them at 80 degrees they want to eat all the time what are you feeding where are you buy? where do you do you just go to red lobster and just start picking stuff out of the dumpster or what Why and uh D and for I Josh, wish it was easy as that. <laughs> <laughs> and for josh you know what crazy antics do you need to get fish uh, fish to bite as far as fish biting, that's a whole di di different story. You just stake your hand out, and they'll jump up and get get you. But say, say for instance, the 4,400-gallon tank, you've got to watch when you're feeding them because you'll stick food out there, and you'll have the arowanas come up, and they'll jump right, right out the, the water and try and bite your hand or just try and get, get at the food. But if you start getting Well, they're over doing nothing the more than they're trained to do in the wild. They're jumper fish, and they jump... You know, some of the bigger arowanas are known to jump up at 15 foot into the trees and eat the monkeys out of the trees. Jeez. I actually I mean, saw that at one of the did you? aquariums. Yeah, they Now, had here's a... the thing. I tell Josh all the time because he grabs a handful of fish and he throws it up. You know, that 4,400 gallon, six foot tall. So he throws it up above his head, goes over to the hole in the top, and he drops them. And I'm like, Josh, please be careful. And at that point, an arowana jumps out of the water and nails his hand, and he yells. And I'm like, I told you. <laughs> I, I, I've got a question for Josh. Josh, Josh, you there? Is, is, yes, sir. Is your nickname Nubs? No. <laughs> no. Is it Nubs? Because you're missing his fingers? Now. <laughs> We're... I think the the most gruesome uh, fish attack that has been here has been from an alligator gar. Oh my goodness! That's why I, I don't trust them. I, ne I never will. I'll never tell someone to that. Oh, my alligator gar won't won't bite because they definitely can, and they they, they will. They have that killer instinct in them, and it don't matter if they're six inches or if they're six feet long. They they start coming near you. You should watch out. <laughs> No, no. Hey Josh, can I tell the story? Tell it. Yeah, go right, go right for it. Oh my God, we're lifting an eight foot tall biofilter, and we're 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 going to put it into our pool because this came out of uh, Aquarium Adventure when they closed down. So we carried it home, and we don't want the bacteria to die. So we want to set it up as fast as possible. 
So here I am. I'm carrying my side. It's about 150 pounds. His side's about 150 pounds because it's full of uh, K1 media, the whole eight foot. It's two foot by two foot by eight foot. And it's heavy as can be. So I'm carrying my side. I, I get over the little pool. It's about three foot tall. It's 14 foot long by seven foot wide and three foot tall. I, I get over it and I get into the water and I start pushing the fish back and I start walking backwards. Well, Josh gets over with one foot and then his other foot. And now we're into the pool and I'm wanting to walk back about another eight foot. Well, Josh stops walking and I'm trying to pull him. I'm like, Josh, quit messing around. And I'm trying not to swear here because what I said was swear words. <laughs> quit effing around is what I said. Nubs. So uh, and, oh and Josh is like, dad. And I'm like, what? Boy, come on, quit messing around. He's like, dad. And I'm like, what? He goes, a fish has got me. And and he's like doing this <laughs> dance thing now. Got me side, where? Right? I'm like, I'm like, what the, what the F, you know? What do you mean a fish has got you? He goes, Dad, a fish is biting me. And he's still doing this dancing S thing. <laughs> and he's moving around. And I look over and sure as shit, there's a four-foot alligator gar done bit his foot. He's got his bottom jaw under his foot and his top jaw on the arch of his foot. And the thing is shaking left and right. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, at this point, I then realized my son, is a god. I mean, <laughs> if that was me, I'd have screamed and let go of the damn filter. And ran. <laughs> My son is like, Dad, the fish has got me. And he's shaking. You know, the fish is shaking him. I mean, it's like, holy shit. This was crazy. <laughs> My son is a beast. Uh, You're I, a man. I am so glad he didn't have you by the crotch, Josh. I was just <laughs> this whole time. I'm. I, he said he's shaking you, and I'm just like, "Where's the fish got you?" My God, it, no, well, that was a great story. It, it up, it, if you got me by the crotch, my name might not be Josh today. It might be Jacqueline. <laughs> all right, all right, Josh. Do you have scars on your on your ankles right now, or nubs? Um, well, yes, I on his foot, I have pictures Okay. of there was probably 90, 90 uh, little blood spots. It looked like he got 90 shots all at once in a big circle, you know, like three inches long, cuts over about two inches and comes back three inches on the top of his foot. Little dots of blood everywhere, and then the same thing underneath. Number I one, got pictures of this. Number one, best tattoo ever. <laughs> number two, if you don't right? have that on a video, Josh, like at least the picture of it, of put it you on need it. That tattoo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, do you have kids at all? No, not yet. I don't. Not yet. Well, you know, someday when you have children, you can say, "Hey, hey, kids, we're gonna play a new game. It's called Connect the Dots," and you can just give them a <laughs> pen, <laughs> give them your foot, keep them busy. You know, it'll work in church, all kinds of places. So, yeah, you got to get that picture. You got to bring them into a tattoo parlor and, like, we recreate this shit, please. <laughs> that was the best story we've ever had on this podcast. That really was. That's great. Get out. That was nothing. We had much better. Oh, that's okay. We'll keep rolling. So did uh, did you have to get seek medical attention, or did your dad say, uh, just put a... Put some duct tape on it. That what he said. I just he went out about duct my taped way. And... Foot. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew these guys. Josh, the you're you're my you hero. Know <laughs> you know what? If, if there's an albino channel catfish and a roll of duct tape, it wasn't from us in front of your door tomorrow. Dude, I swear to God, we used Neosporin, some gauze, and some gray duct tape. I shit you not. I, if it would have been my dad, it would have been old Milwaukee and a dirty rag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's it we gotta See, get josh you got it made here buddy that's right you, you, your, your daddy loves you you guys gotta do a new line of t-shirts just put josh's foot on there and say <laughs> i'm the man I, 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 I took one for the team i took one for the team ohio fish rescue <laughs> so I, I, I never did get my question answered. Right. what do you guys feed these these gosh darn fish my god you must buy hundreds of pounds of of stuff a week. I, what, where are you getting your stuff? No, no, no. We just feed them kids that don't listen to me. I've got, I got a 28 year old. <laughs> they don't listen to 28. Um, yeah, no. Mostly we feed uh, tilapia, shrimp, and uh, we used to feed hot dogs, but there's a certain brand of hot dogs. What hot dog? 
<laughs> no, I, I swear no, we need, God, a, we, need, we need a sponsor. So if I hope it's like Schrager Oscar Fun Dog. Ma- Oscar Meyer has a way for fish. Eat no, fish no, 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 no. <laughs> the normal hot dogs are way too greasy and, and makes your water too dirty. Um, I met a guy in uh, was a, it? It was Washington above California. His name um, was Ted. Ted, yes. Ted, Ted the hot dog man. Thousand gallon tank that uh, was out outdoors at the time. And he had some huge fish, 19 huge catfish. Well, his tank broke open, and he was giving them away. It was on monsterfishkeepers.com. And I I just sillily put on a, a, a post, I'll take them all. <laughs> and, and, you know, people were like, you know, they were jumping on it, and he was like all for it. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, I was kidding, you know. And next thing you know, I... I bought a box truck for twenty four hundred dollars. We built an eight hundred gallon uh, uh, two by four wood tub with a liner in it, and then my son Josh, my son Richie, and the guy that worked for me at the time, Ricky, drove straight through to Washington, and it was seventy two hour drive there and back. Supposedly, it took like ninety some, but. They made it there. They collected all the fish. They got them all into this tub. And now my idea was, well, if we're having three drivers, we can drive straight through because I'll put a piece of uh, of plywood on top of this big 800-gallon tub, and we can put a mattress on top of there, and then somebody can sleep while somebody's driving. What the hell? (laughs) Oh, Oh, dude, it was was a great thought. OSHA approved, yes. (laughs) My lord. Now, Now check this out. Here, here we go. My son Richie's driving. Ricky's in the passenger seat. Josh is in the back. Now they're using Prime. Have you ever smelled Prime? Smells like ass. <laughs> There's another sponsor we should go after. A great product, and it works great. You know, it takes the chloramines, chlorines out of the water, but it does smell like ass. And Straight sulfur. We're, we're we're doing 800 gallons of it. Here's what we didn't take into you know consideration. My son is locked in the back of a truck with a 800 gallon tank full of prime and 19 four foot fish that are being aerated, and the air bubbles are busting and shooting the prime up into the air. And so my son Richie pulls over at a gas station to get gas. And he comes in the back, and he unlocks the door for Joshy to get out. Well, Joshy was sleeping back there, and or passed out. I was going to say passed out or dead. <laughs> and, and he goes and he gets a whole you know truck full of fresh air. Well, he gets up off of this concoction, this bed, this this box, and he gets one foot out of the truck, and he passes the f out. <laughs> and falls down the rest of the, the, the truck, you know, bumper and steps and everything to the ground. Well, everybody there around there, they were like, oh, my God, this kid is drunk. And it's clearly he's underage. So they call the cops on him. Oh, no. Now, mind you, my son Richie and Ricky are in the store. And they're getting Tostitos. They're getting chips. Jimmy, some Jimmy's. And, you know, Beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they come out of the store, they paid for their gas. They come out and there's cops and like a crowd around the back of the truck. And they come walking up. They're like, what's going on? Well, the cops grab them and throw them to the ground. They handcuff them. They they throw their, their snacks everywhere. What state was this? And this was, Washington. what state was that, Josh? Washington. It was Washington. Washington State. So, you didn't even get out of Washington now, now, before now, you got high? You, these poor kids are getting arrested for rescuing fish, and now they're on the ground. They're getting handcuffed, and everybody's around like they should. They should. They should die because they got this child, this this kid, drunk. And shoot him. The cops made the Joshy take a breathalyzer, and he passed. He wasn't drunk. He was passed out from prime. <laughs> <laughs> that that is the that, best. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a great. <laughs> so we got to contact the people that make Prime. Everybody got released and they drove away. And but we're still none of them have been back sponsored. to Washington since. <laughs> so, so who got the second second night in the in the back of the truck? 
It wasn't uh, me. Josh, when you took over driving, who was sleeping in the back? It was Richie. Was it? You sure it wasn't Ricky? Because you told me Ricky almost tipped the truck over. Yeah, that's... He was driving. I was in the passenger seat. Ricky almost killed us. Ricky drove for a total of 25 minutes. <laughs> I drove for about 98 hours, something like that. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, Ricky was worthless. He started going down a hill. And now, mind you, 800 gallons in a tub in the back of your 16-foot box truck. 5,600 pounds. I mean, it makes a little difference. Well... He was going downhill, and the brakes started to get too hot, and he was hitting the brakes. Well, he went into the oncoming lane, and at the last minute, he swerved right to you know avoid the car that's going to hit him, and the, the truck came up on two wheels. Josh had to go from the passenger seat over to the driver's seat, correct the steering, get him back on four wheels, and threw Ricky out of the truck. You're not driving no more. <laughs> And change your now, mind you, my brother's in the back of the box truck. Oh, yeah, getting bounced around everywhere, smelling shit. What the hell just happened? And and so, the next next stop was Walmart to buy underwear for everybody (laughs) because they had pooped their (laughs) pants. My god, why why are you guys alive? I'm just curious. Everybody (laughs) just blamed it on Prine. (laughs) How are it's for the betterment of the fish. I'm, I'm just, you know, he says he's got he's got three sons. He didn't start out saying that he had nine before he started all this. <laughs> well, I didn't want to tell you about the other five. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My lord, this is fantastic. This is I've not had this much fun in so long. This is great. And mind you, he just went to a Great White concert this last weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We were. <laughs> oh, I wanted to mention on that. Great White is awesome, and you know, I don't care what you say about Vixen. They may not be a Betty White, but damn, they're a great band. But Great White is awesome. Yeah, I mean, awesome. We're losing your audio again, but yeah, we definitely had a had a great time. We went backstage. Jimmy is very connected in the uh, '80s rock and roll world. Yeah, we went backstage. Uh, uh, the new there, there's two two Great Whites. There's Jack Russell's Great White, who's the original lead singer. He has he's out there doing his own thing. We've met him several times. He has been nothing but. Is uh, that the guy with once been twice shy? Yep. And 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 oh that, yeah, that was great, great white. You know, and, and we we've met him several times. Uh, he's still haunted by the uh, the big the fire, the big yeah. fire. And so the band that we saw was all the original guys without Jack, and they have a new lead singer now, Mitch Malloy, who's from Dickinson, North Dakota. Mitch Malloy also was in Van Halen for about two to three weeks between. David Roth and Sammy Hagar. That's his claim to fame. Yep, that's his claim to fame. And 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 Mitch Malloy is a beautiful man. He's got long blonde hair down to his butt. And uh, we met him last year on the Monsters of Rock cruise, and he remembered us. It was kind of funny. And we walked in. And he goes, "Awesome." He looked at us. He goes, "You guys are from Detroit Lakes." And uh, my my wife has uh, got purple hair. Wait, did he remember you, or was he scared? Yeah, no, not scared. No. <laughs> No, we every year we go on this this thing called Monsters of Rock Cruise. It's a '80s rock cruise with about 50 bands. No, he was scared because Jimmy awesome. threatened to leave buckets of fish on his front. That's door. right. I was gonna. <laughs> I brought some chum to the Great White <coughs> concert. So. Some prime. Yeah, some prime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, for for all you huffers out there who who are huffing paint right now, don't the... give him new ideas. <laughs> oh God. God. <laughs> Just, That'll be the next thing. Prime is no longer allowed to be sold at pet stores. Uh, the... I'm just trying to help. They actually changed up their formula now, so it's not the, the, the same smell that can uh, do damage to you. Now it's a l- little bit more pleasant. Still doesn't smell as good, but it's not the stuff that uh, it's did It's still a great product. To me. Yeah, so it doesn't smell like ass. But I would not suggest closing yourself (laughs) into an enclosed 16-foot filter or, you know, uh, uh, truck with an 800-gallon tank full of prime. I mean, (laughs) who would have thought that was bad? (laughs) So it doesn't smell like ass now. It smells like ass light. All right, we're going to put an APB out. (laughs) For those that are listening that are artists, if anybody can draw up a rendition of, you know, a handful of guys in a truck with 800 gallons and a of uh, Prine with a bed on top with, on two wheels, that will be the new, <laughs> that will be the new banner. That'll be our you'll new see logo. It. Yeah, that will be the new logo. 
I'm going to be selling t-shirts outside of every... Ohio every Fish every Rescue. Month. We are so lucky to be alive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Forget about the fish. We're still here. <laughs> but you've also got to get the gator guard jumping out of the tub trying oh, to God, bite yeah. my foot. Yes. That has to be in there. If you can make a caricature of this... <laughs> we'll we'll find a way to compensate you. I That's, swear to God, it, it might be with a free gift card to to Wendy's or something <laughs> for five bucks. So to make sure we're going down our list, I did want to touch on fake rescues. So we see this time to time. Um, like you said, people will set up a small rescue. It's not that they have bad intentions; they want free fish. And the things right. that I want to point out before you know I end the podcast is. You know, do your homework on whoever you uh, find as a fish rescue. Most pet stores, and especially mom and pop shops, will happily take back in your fish because, again, they're there to uh, try to support you and your hobby. And if you can no longer handle a fish or made an incorrect purchase elsewhere, they'll do their best. But, again, they may not have the facilities to take it. So having a people right. like the Ohio Fish Rescue is nice. And there's also what I'm seeing is two different scams. Um, number one, people like to get free fish, and then they just hand them off uh, to whoever they can outsource them to. But the bigger thing is I'm seeing is people trying they to take s- them and resell them. And not just that, because even a, a rescue has to move fish somehow. So if they find a new home no, and someone I, wants to do a do donation, not resell no fish at all. We make no zero profit on any fish. And that's what makes you admirable. But you know, if there's a, someone wants to donate, you know, a couple dollars. There's there's nothing wrong behind uh, that for some uh, areas, but right, taking course. fish in just to make a profit is, should not be the business. So number one, check to make sure they have a charity license like you guys do. So that's that's check number one. That's easy easy homework. Number two is also you know see their motive or long term play because what I'm starting to see is pop ups, especially uh, pop up places that do Airbnb places. And this is happening more and more commonly where people will say that, no, I'm a, I'm a charity. And they'll get all these, you know, free koi or, you know, different uh, free tanks and try to make a play out of it where they can make, a, you know, a small B&B or, uh, or something else. And it, the entire idea well, is not know, to rescue fish. In that situation, the fish are still being taken care of. And, you know, I'd say, you know, good kind. for you. Try it. But, you know, the, 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 run your run your you know scam, but you're still taking care of the fish. My biggest thing was people that you know. Oh, he's getting the rescue and he's getting all these free fish. Well, they don't realize that I'm not getting free fish. I'm getting other people's problems, and I have to find these fish a home. Um, right, you're a foster, and home. I have to keep people happy. You know, so that's that's one problem. Two is the second second problem is maybe they don't want just so much free fish other than they want their fish and they want to be a rescue, but they can't be a rescue. If your rescue says right. no to certain fish, it's not a then rescue. they're not a real rescue. Exactly. Okay? So we never say no to any fish, including if you call me with 20 pakus. Now I'll go, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but <laughs> I will still take them. Um, I'm taking on the responsibility of finding them a home. Um, a lot of people just want their tanks full. You know, check into your fish rescue. Do they have a 90 gallon and a 55 gallon, and that's it? Are they just trying to fill their tanks? Are they saying no to some fish? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Are they taking the fish in and then putting it back up for sale on you know Facebook Marketplace? You have to do your due diligence on every rescue that you contact. The thing I'm seeing um, is with the Airbnbs is that they'll have deck the decor and ponds out front. Come that winter, they'll destroy all the fish that they got donated. There is no homes for them, and it's a tragedy that really? I've seen in a lot with of different pond? places. Yes. They don't live through the winter? They don't live through the winter. They just want them donated there so they have free decoration. So do your homework. See what's happening to the oh, fish. That's See horrible. their policies. Yeah, we ran into this a couple of times. So yep, it's just uh, not naming names, but uh, yeah, we're very- that's something I have not run into, but have not thought about because if anybody wants koi, obviously they got a pond. The pond they'll 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 you know winter over. They're deep enough, of course. Duh. Not here, but <laughs> well, this no, not in I guess not. Yeah. Yeah, they're up in Minnesota. The frost line's a lot deeper. Up Six feet. Here in, oh, yeah. In Ohio, it's only 10 inches or so. Yeah, we need Holy six God. feet for uh, for Koi to be completely safe. 
uh, with no risk. Wow. Yeah, it, it's it's not uncommon to get actual temperature, you know, 30, 32 below for about seven or eight days in, in January. It's always the first or second week in January. Yeah, well, that's the highs. The highs. Up north there. Up north there. Yeah, called me to come up to Chicago, Illinois. I went up there, and it turned out to be the coldest day of the year. It was negative 52 with yep. the wind chills. It was retarded. And yet Paul Kafaro was with me, and he ran outside in his bare feet into the snow and picked the ice cubes or icicles off of the roof. I'm like, it was all for his you know, YouTube videos, but I'm like, I'm flabbergasted. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have – last year it was 47 below I recorded in our, back, our backyard one night. Actual temperature. Actual temperature. Actual, yeah, actual temperature without wind chill. Yeah, wind, oh, my God. Wind chill brought it to like 68 below. Mm-hmm. See, that will definitely bring – that. your actual temperature will bring down the, the, the earth temperature way down. Absolutely. Well, I just, oh never God. going to Minnesota. I wanted to point that uh, out so you yeah. guys could do your diligence. I'm sorry, guys, but I don't want to visit. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? In the summer. In the summer. Our, our only thing is that at least we can make fun of the Canadians where it gets really cold. Exactly. Actually, to be fair, we get uh, sometimes we get below the Canadians because they're the Great Lakes. Yeah. So we, yep. we get it pretty bad here compared. Yeah. Oh, you get the wind chill. We get it all. In our area here, we have got how many hundred lakes in our area in a 20-mile radius? 412? Well, we from our house to thirty mile drive, it's more lakes mile per square mile than anywhere else in the world. Um, but Minnesota itself has around eighteen thousand lakes. Right, but we have like well, eight- let me let me know when the Paku, you know, population, you know, invades your lakes. Already happened because that's when I know I I, I have to give up. <laughs> we had they already uh, dump them there. We have one of the records. Uh, they were they were trying it at one point. This was like. I'm going to say eight years ago, they pulled a massive Paku out of the Mississippi um, close to the Minneapolis, and the thing was like a damn billboard sign. <laughs> it was. It looked like a garbage can. It was amazing. You know, I saw one of those uh, those those ads about, you know, this, this strange fish with human teeth, you know. Uh, it was one of those strange ads like that that this, this is like an alien fish or something. Well, they actually eat nuts, Is that right? how it was? Yeah, and they actually eat nuts, don't they? That because nuts that fall out of the trees in the in the Amazon. Yeah, yep. well, that in their natural habitat, that's what they eat. Yeah, is the nuts that come out of trees. Yeah, and and that's why they Clean have the grinding legs, teeth like humans. They'll eat anything. They're they're pretty pretty crazy. Actually, one of the delicacies of the uh, the the tribes over there is to cut open the paku open up their digestive tract and take the nuts that they ate and already crushed and, you know, uh, went through their digestive tract. Now they're softened food and they, that's one of the delicacies over there. And this does not occur at Ohio Fish Rescue. I just need to paint that out loud and clear. <laughs> we don't get bile caviar happening. No fish fries at OFR. <laughs> Wait, we did have this little Vietnamese guy showed up and he wanted one of my paku. And, I, you know, in my whole screening process, I'm asking them what size tank you got, you know, blah, 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 what's your plans for them? You know, because this thing was like 26 inches. And I had bigger. I had a 32-inch Paku at the time. It was like 12 inches wide, huge Paku. And uh, probably about 45, maybe maybe 48 pounds. And uh, he wanted this Paku that I had put up in the paper, you know, you know if anybody, you know, uh, I think I forget what I put. If anybody needs a a big fish for their big tanks, let me know. And, and you know, he contacted me, and within talking to him, within about twenty minutes, I found out that he came over from or came up from South America, and this was one of his delicacies he remembers as a kid, eating paku like we eat walleye in in perch here. He ate paku as a kid there, and he wanted more than just the one fish I was offering. So I'm like, well, damn, what size tank do you have? And he's telling me, oh, I got a 6,000-gallon tank. I'm like, well, what are the dimensions then? He's like, oh, it's 10 foot by 3 foot by 3 foot tall. I'm like, that's about a 1,000-gallon tank. (laughs) 
He's like, no, that's 6,000 gallons. I'm like, no, this tank right here is 10 foot by 4 foot by 3 foot, and it's 1,000. And, uh, you know, finally he admitted he wanted as many Paku as he could get because he wanted to eat them. Well, you see, Ohio Fish Rescue, you know, as much as you guys want to be, don't be the new Red Lobster. That's right. <laughs> Right, we are not the Red Lobster, damn it! No Red Lobster. <laughs> you should you should ask him. You know how big is your tank? You should have said how big is your frying pan. There you go. Because obviously it was too well, small. Well, that would have simplified things. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, w- what we'll do is uh, we'll certainly have to have you on in the future sometime. We again we appreciate uh, the time. We got a, a lot of stories, a lot of uh, information, and we I don't think we scratched the surface nearly. Not even a little bit. This is going to be a three part series over. At Course of I'm good with that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're going to do it. So, Adam, before we leave, you want to give us our fish of the episode. Okay, the fish <laughs> of the episode this week is archer fish, and they're kind of a neat little fish. They actually shoot water out of the water and, I guess, in the water to hit bugs and invertebrates and stun them and eat them. You don't see them very often, and it's because they're a brackish water fish. Most pet stores don't really deal with brackish. Um, I brought them in just because I thought they were cool. They uh, they will jump and keep in group, keep them in groups. I always try to sell them in trios or groups of six, depending on your tank size. They get up to ten inches and or sixteen inches, and they're found mostly in estuaries. Um, I've never tried them in pure salt water, but I've heard of people that have. But I don't think that that's you know, advisable. I would advise uh, using, you know, brackish water systems and then using like a marine salt instead of regular aquarium salt to make your salinity right. I think the salinity I kept them at was like 1.35. And then you can put them with monos and other brackish water fish, not bumblebee gobies. They will eat those. So that's the fish people here. Episode. People hear brackish and they get real nervous. Don't be nervous. Brackish is simply uh, is real easy to, to treat. It's not near as expensive as a, as a marine hobby. It's just simply just adding extra water and and doing a simple test. It's not uh, not near the ma- um, maintenance people give it credit for. So don't be intimidated. If you wanted to give it a try, it is a fun fish as long as you have the space for it. And you know I've seen people do creative uh, enclosures for them on occasion, trying to make them, uh, especially in zoos, imitate the bug behavior. But if I'm not correct, do you guys, Josh, have one at your facility? <laughs> yes, we, we do. do. He's about 10 can I, can I add to that story? Please. Okay. Um, he was saying something about they, they, you know, squirt water out, blah, blah, blah. Um, we have one about 10 inches long now. And he was in uh, brackish water <laughs> for the first six months of his life. And since then, he's been in fresh water for about 10 years. Um. He is now in our 1,000-gallon tank, and, uh, you know, if I take off the lids and I hold a cricket about two foot out of the water, he will shoot water up and knock that cricket out of my fingers and into the water, and he'll eat it. I mean, he is crazy. That is a, a – them archer fish are, like, dead-on target fish. They, they, they are a remarkable fish. Uh, you can, you know, uh, acclimate them to fresh water. I didn't, you know, I was always under the circumstances, if it's a brackish, don't do it to fresh water. But we have a few fish here that people have had, you know, like we have a scat that people have had to fresh water for over 10 years. So we're not going to move it back to brackish. We're going to leave it living the way it was. It's in fresh water, and it's in our 1,000 gallon. And then we got this huge you know, uh, archer fish and, uh, you know, he's in fresh water. So we let him go, but an, an archer fish's natural habitat is to shoot the bugs out of the trees. When they hit the water, they hit, they eat them. Well, we sometimes hold crickets up there and they shoot them out of our fingers and they land in the water and, and I'll be damned if you don't eat them. <laughs> so a lot of these species um, that you would have for brackish environments, uh, Archer fish in particular are more sensitive when they're young, and clearly that's what you guys are uh, showing. It's very dependent on yeah. species. So, let's take another species example. The freshwater flounder is exactly the opposite. When they're young, they love freshwater. When they're older, they need brackish water. 
So certainly do your homework on salinity needs and always ask an experienced uh, pet owner if you have the ability to get, see what they're they're doing. Just a quick question, guys. Do you have a YouTube on that of the uh, of squirting of the squirting? No, we sure don't. Because you know a YouTube uh, video is uh, it has to be at least ten minutes. Uh, you know, up to twenty minutes is the best. You know, we found is the best time you need ten to twenty minutes. Because under ten minutes, it 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 bodes bad for you because of the retention time. So you need 10 minutes or more, up to 20 minutes. And, you know, every once in a while we'll catch them on doing the, the brackish thing, but it's it's a 30-second event, right. you know, so it's hard. But, you know, we can include it into one of our videos eventually. I think that would be fascinating. Uh, doing yeah. that because that's yeah, pretty I'd neat. I'd like to have it seen. Well, you got to yeah. have it like as a finale to the tattoo video that Josh is going to get after the show. <laughs> well, Josh is getting a tattoo? Come on, man! Do it! Do it for us. We, we, we need this. What tattoo is this? The alligator guard tattoo. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh! Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thanks again. The only way I see that happening is if you fly out here and you tattoo it. Oh, 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 oh! oh. 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 Challenge oh. accepted. That might be a challenge right there. <laughs> I've never done a tattoo, but you know, I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night. And I- <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that tough. I mean, oh, my really? God, Josh. What did you get yourself in for? <laughs> we'll even do a cute little Have butterfly in your butt or something. I don't know. It'll be kind of fun. This is gonna... I'll tell you what. I know the owner of 252 Tattoo. If you guys fly out here and you want to do a radio show of it, Josh, would you be up for it? Get the bite marks tattooed onto your foot? Why not? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the... oh, he he oh is the man. God. Oh my God! This is great. This is, All right. This wait, is... wait, wait, wait. He knows Cat Von D. I'm going to try my damnedest to get her out here to 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 be on this show while we're videoing you getting the tattoo from 252 Tattoo. Man, yes, <laughs> she is in she is in such demand. Cat is in so much demand. It's about a two year waiting list right now to get get her to do anything. I, uh, well, see, these guys are on yeah, the inside. Yeah, but, you know, he is a friend of hers, so. There you go. And he, I've heard him say it multiple times, so we'll see. Otherwise, he's lying to me. <laughs> well, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. We definitely have a long podcast here to process, but we'll have you back on. There's a ton more stories to go. We, and... we got a lot more questions. Well, uh, well thank... Hey, we have more stories. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Excellent. be glad to have you guys back. We'll, we appreciate it so much, guys. Again, uh, again check out Ohio uh, Ohio Fish Rescue, OhioFishRescue.com. They have, again, three ways to donate. You can uh, do PayPal, uh, GoFundMe, and uh, uh, oh, my brain is just Patreon. Uh, Patreon, thank you. And above that, you can get a T-shirt. So, And uh, their number's on their website. Give them a call. Tell them you love them. We, uh, <laughs> we say that every, every we say podcast. We say that every <laughs> podcast. And apparently, you said you got some people calling you, so... Uh, you're welcome. You know what? The we next, love you. The next time you call and tell these guys you love them, give them 10 bucks, help them buy some uh, Paku food, because obviously <laughs> Pakus are a problem over at Ohio Fish Rescue. And know that if you're looking for a big Paku, we got some people for you. Oh, we got you covered. Got you covered. <laughs> you know, the, the next time we have you guys on, I, I want to hear about how you uh, ship such large fishes, and especially alligator gar and stuff, so we'll save that for next time. I, I really want to know how you get these things over to the aquariums. <laughs> Well, thanks again, guys. That's thank cool. You. We won't tell you about Josh's uh, personal injury when he messed with Alligator Gar last time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see photos. All right. Thanks again, guys, and let's kick that outro. Thanks, guys, for listening to this podcast. Please visit us at AquariumGuysPodcast.com and listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and anywhere you can listen to podcasts. We're practically thanks. everywhere. We're on Google. I mean... Just go to your favorite place, Pocket Casts, subscribe to make sure it gets push notifications directly to your phone. Otherwise, Jim will be crying in his sleep. Can, can I listen to it in the in my treehouse? In your treehouse, in your fish room, even alone at work. What about it, my man cave? Especially your man cave. Yeah. Only if Adam's there. No. With feeder guppies. No. no. They're endless. You midget loving <laughs> sucking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll see you next time. <laughs> Later.